Boswell Elementary School teaches pre-kindergarten through fifth grade. It is an urban school where most students live in small yards, apartments, or mid-sized housing projects. Many students participate in local church groups. Dr. Jones has been the principal of Boswell for the past three years. The school building was built in 1931 and currently has some leaking problems. Boswell lacks a computer lab and only has two laptop carts. There is pride in the school's art program, which gives students the opportunity to partake in classes like art, dance, and music five times a week for 50 minutes. Students' work is celebrated throughout the school. In the 2013-2014 school year, Boswell took the local state assessment and then switched to the PARCC assessment, which was known for its high rigor. Currently, Boswell is focusing on teacher transiency and instruction in order to help increase their students' performance. When examining our data overview, we like to think of this as an analogy of examining an elephant. We are exploring the data from all angles to pinpoint the area of focus and identify the learning-centered problem. I think one of the most significant parts of having these data discussions prior to identifying our area of instructional focus and identifying our learning-centered problem here is first discussing our celebrations and our points of growth that we need to acknowledge. So between the 2014-2015 and 2015-2016 school years, the overall number of students achieving proficiency levels improved in both math and ELA. In ELA, we saw a 7% growth overall, and in math, we saw 11% growth overall. Another point that we need to notice here for our celebrations is that our ELL students increased the number of students scoring at a level 4 by 5% in ELA and 10% in math from 2014-2015 to 2015-2016. Continuing our celebrations, the number of black students scoring at a level four increased by 7% and at a level five by 3% in math from the 2014-15 to 2015-2016 school year. The number of black students scoring at a level five also increased by 8% in ELA. And the number of Hispanic students scoring at a level four increased by 10%. Boswell ELA proficiency levels are higher than the district in 4th and 5th grade for all three school years. Also, Boswell improved from being 5% lower than the district average to being only 1% below the district average for 3rd grade. Regardless of the fact that we can always identify areas in need of improvement, it is essential that we acknowledge the growth that we have made and the successes we have had. Boswell is certainly heading in a positive direction, and these successes are a direct reflection of the continued efforts of the staff in working together to positively impact student learning. Two elementary school student demographics for 2015 to 2016 include 637 students with an average class size of 17. 100% of our students receive free or reduced lunch. The majority of the school is black and Hispanic, and there's a small percentage of white students and students that have multiple races. Our students um, that receive ELL instruction are 32% and 12% are in special education, and the remaining 56% are in regular education courses. Slides 6 through 8 show Boswell's performance on the state test compared to the district. Each chart is made up of data from a different grade level beginning with third grade. As you can see, the math scores are on the top of the English language art scores for each year with the most recent data at the top of the graph. This particular representation was selected to visually show that Boswell typically scores better than the district in English language arts, however, not in math. The third grade scores show commensurate performance in math at 33% proficient and only one percentage point difference in English language arts.
Slide 7 is the same layout but has the data for fourth grade performance at the school level and district level. You can see that the English language arts performance for Boswell showed growth from the 1415 to 1516 school year, bringing these scores more in alignment with district performance. This particular graph shows the fifth grade performance. And if you focus again on the 1415 and 1516 school year data, you can see that the scores show Boswell's performance commensurate with the district in both reading and math. Slides 9 and 10 use the same data but show the score difference as a comparison between the district and Boswell Elementary School. Slide 9 and 10 take the visual information from slides 6 through 8 and make it more concrete so that the person analyzing the data does not have to determine the actual difference in each area. Please focus on the data from 14, 15, and 15, 16 because these are the most consistent years to compare. The fourth grade performance in English language arts is the strongest for Boswell Elementary School. This particular graph allows you to look at grade level performance over time as compared to district performance. Slide 10 is the same format for math and the most growth and strongest performance is again in the fourth grade when focusing on the data from the 1415 and 1516 school years. The performance for Boswell as compared to the district has been relatively strong during this time period. However, there are important areas that require focused attention as we move through the remainder of the slideshow. ELA performance level growth from 2014-2015 to 2015-2016 shows that at level one, students not meeting expectations, there was an 8% decrease. For level two, students partially meeting expectations, there was also a 3% decrease. For students approaching expectations, at level three, there was a 3% increase and <clears throat> for both meeting, expect meeting expectations and exceeding expectations, there were significant growth of 3% and 4% respectively. Looking at the math performance level growth from 2014-2015 to 2015-2016, we see that at level one, not meeting expectations, there was a 1% decrease. At level two, partially meeting expectations, there was also a 1% decrease from 27% to 26%. Approaching expectations, level three, there was an 8% decrease. For level four, meeting expectations, there was a 9% increase. And for exceeding expectations at level five, there was a 2% increase, which are areas that we should so when looking at the ELA proficiency comparisons, this graph really illustrates the discrepancy of growth among subgroups. Most significantly, students with disabilities showed zero growth between the 2014-15 school year and the 2015-16 school year, which is really something that needs to be more closely examined and addressed. Why are these students not making any growth, especially in comparison to the other subgroups? Every other subgroup that we're looking at here showed overall growth from the 2014-15 and 2015-16 school years. However, another thing to be identified here is that ELL students are still performing significantly lower than Black and Hispanic students. ELL students' proficiency levels are 13% lower than Hispanic students and 17% lower than Black students. When looking at the math proficiency comparisons, the data right here is very similar to the ELA proficiency comparisons, especially in the fact that the students with disabilities are again showing 0% growth between the 2014-15 and 2015-16 school year. Also, we are taking a look at all subgroups are showing growth except for the special ed students. Um, but again, here we're, we're still being able to see that the ELL students are performing lower than the black and Hispanic students again. 
the ELL students' proficiency levels are 7% lower than Hispanic students and 16% lower than Black students. This chart illustrates the student ELA performance level changes from school year 2014-15 to 2015-16. First of all, the reason that we are focusing on just the 2014-15 to 2015-16 school year data is because the 2013-14 school data was collected from a different state assessment. Therefore, we wanted to focus on the school years where the same assessment was used to offer a more consistent comparison. Now the first thing I want to point out is that black students and Hispanic students are showing an overall shift in students that are scoring at a level 1 and 2 to scoring at a level 3, 4, or 5. The area that we need to kind of hone in on a little bit is that ELL students showed an 8% increase in students scoring at a level 1, which is the lowest proficiency level. ELL students also increased the number of students scoring at a level 4 by 5% which is a higher proficiency level, which is a point of growth for them. Um, in terms of students with disabilities, there was a 23% decrease in students with disabilities scoring at a level 1, and an 18% increase in students scoring at a level 2, and a 5% increase in students scoring at a level 3. However, there was no change in the 0% of students scoring at a level 4 or a 5, which are proficiency levels. The cool thing about looking at this data is that in the previous examples of comparing our subgroups, we noticed that there was zero growth in students with disabilities um, meeting proficiency levels. However, this data allows us to see that there is some growth in students moving forward from level one to level two or level two to level three. So we, do, we are able to see a little bit of growth for those students right there. This chart illustrates the student math performance level changes from the school year 2014-15 to 2015-16. Again, here we see that black students and Hispanic students are showing an overall shift in more students scoring at higher proficiency levels, just as we saw in the ELA performance level changes. Um, in terms of students with disabilities, there was a 2% increase in students with disabilities scoring at a level 1 and a 5% increase in students scoring at a level 2, and an 8% decrease in students scoring at a level 3. This really illustrates a downward shift in math performance levels for these students with disabilities. In terms of ELL students, those students showed a 2% decrease in students scoring at a level 1, a 4% decrease in students scoring at a level 2, and a 3% decrease in students scoring at a level 3, and a 2% decrease in student scoring at a level 5. This is kind of that upward shift in math performance for these ELL students, which is a really good point of growth. Another major point of growth here to note is that ELL students showed a 10% increase in student scoring at a level 4, which is amazing. That's a huge growth point and jump from 2014-15 to 2015-16. Here is the 2014-2015 and 2015-2016 ELA data from ELL students sorted by grade level. For third grade students, there was a decrease of 5% in the overall proficiency. In fourth grade students, the proficiency levels rose 23%, with level 4 making the most growth. Fifth grade students had a slight increase in proficiency but their percentages fluctuated between seven or less percentage points in all levels. The all showed that their proficiency levels slightly moved between the two years. One reason Boswell could have seen some growth in fourth and fifth graders in the 2015-2016 school year could have been because students had been exposed to the test the prior year. An important piece of information to acknowledge would be that in both years, there were 0% of students performing in a level 5 in all grade levels. Here is math data for ELL students in the 2014-2015 and 2015-2016 school years sorted by grade level. In third grade, students we see that are at a level 5 went from 3% to 0%. We noticed that in third grade, there wasn't much growth between the two years. Fourth grade proficiency went up 17%. Majority of students in fourth grade 
or at a level 2. Fifth grade students saw the proficiency level go from 0 to 10 percent. Fifty percent of students in fifth grade were at a level 3 in the 15-16 school year as compared to 29 percent the year before. The proficiency level for all rose 8 percent and majority of the students are performing at level 2 and 3. I think one of the most significant parts of having these data discussions prior to identifying our area of instructional focus and identifying our learning centered problem here is first discussing our celebrations and our points of growth that we need to acknowledge. So between the 2014-2015 and 2015-2016 school years, the overall number of students achieving proficiency levels improved in both math and ELA. In ELA, we saw a 7% growth overall, and in math, we saw 11% growth overall. Another point that we need to notice here for our celebrations is that our ELL students increased the number of students scoring at a level 4 by 5% in ELA and 10% in math from 2014-2015 to 2015-2016. Continuing our celebrations, the number of black students scoring at a level 4 increased by 7% and at a level 5 by 3% in math from the 2014-15 to 2015-2016 school year. The number of black students scoring at a level 5 also increased by 8% in ELA, and the number of Hispanic students scoring at a level 4 increased by 10%. Boswell ELA proficiency levels are higher than the district in 4th and 5th grade for all three school years. Also, Boswell improved from being 5% lower than the district average to being only 1% below the district average for 3rd grade. Regardless of the fact that we can always identify areas in need of improvement, it is essential that we acknowledge the growth that we have made and the successes we have had. Boswell is certainly heading in a positive direction and these successes are a direct reflection of the continued efforts of the staff in working together to positively impact student learning. In our area of instructional focus, we center around two different subgroups. The first being students with disabilities. Though the overall number of students achieving proficiency levels improved in both math and ELA, the subgroup of students in being served by special education showed no growth. Performance level changes illustrated a greater weakness in math for these students. Not only have the students who are served in the special education population not demonstrated growth, they have a 0% student proficiency on the PARCC in 2014-15 and 2015-2016. This lack of growth uh, leads us to look into questions on uh, the overall test and what we can do to improve it, either instructional focus or preparing them for the test in general. The second area of instructional focus we centered on was ELL students. Despite an overall improvement in ELA proficiency, their growth is lower than the other subgroups. In English language arts, ELL students' proficiency levels are 13% lower than Hispanic students and 17% lower than black students. In math, the ELL student proficiency levels are 7% lower than Hispanic students and 16% lower than black students. It is also important to note that ELL students make up nearly a third of the entire student body at Boswell Elementary, so language instruction is an area of focus for the entire school. In identifying the learning center problem, we believe we need further information on the following topics, specifically the PARCC and how that compares to the previous standardized test used. What are the format differences, scoring procedures, what kind of student accommodations are provided, who qualifies for the test? We'd also need to know how the PARCC aligns with our current Boswell ELA and math curriculum. Another issue would be a possible review of special education programs and services. What is the types of educational settings based on student disabilities or instructional practices and classroom accommodations provided in the LRE? Are students who qualify for special education services making adequate progress in their individual IEP goals throughout the year? Are the IEPs being constructed to best support the students' needs focused on the PARCC and state testing?
These problems we've identified, we believe we need further information to answer. For instance, what are the attendance rates of these subgroups of students? Are they frequently absent, tardy? What part of instruction are they missing? How does their classroom performance and achievement compare to proficiency levels? If they're doing well in class, are they doing well in the test? And what's the disconnect? What is the impact or existence of community language program? Are they offered uh, additional English instruction? Is it offered to families? For ELL students, what percentage of you of English is used versus their first language at home? And what are the levels of English language proficiency when they enter the system? We'd also like to know what percentage of students with disabilities are ELL learners. So what population of ELL learners also fit into that population of special education students? And what kind of services are they being offered? Does lack of technology and building conditions impact school culture? Has the school culture been degraded so much that it's affecting their student learning? 